Can you feel it? The palpable oppression of wintertime over every fiber of your meat bag? Woof. Listen, I enjoy winter as much as the next person, but tis the time of the season, beginning of February, where I say, all right, that's enough. And so it is on this wintry, dreary, wet, sludgy day that I say, it's time to get whimsical. One of my favorite video concepts to do is remaking something that already exists, whether that be taking shitty thrift store items and making them less shitty or anything of the like. This week I needed something a little bit more small scale and something that is completely in my wheelhouse and I'm very excited to get started. In my wheelhouse, what's the origin of that? A wheelhouse is literally a small enclosure on a boat or a ship that houses the steering wheel. All right, that's it. That's the video. You're welcome. So recently I was perusing ye old internet and I thought it might be kind of fun to take something that is relatively cheaply made and remaking it myself. I hopped on over to Timu and let me tell you what a wild land. Now I already have trust issues when it comes to things on the internet. This didn't help. I was looking at most of these items thinking there ain't no way in heck in hell that any of these items look as their picture. <laughs> there ain't no way. stumbled upon this variety of witches hats. I was very curious what they were actually gonna look like in person. You know I love making things look like wood. Gosh darn. I purchased this one right here. Let's take a gander, shall we? Speaking of winter oppression, of course I'm wearing PJ pants underneath my skirt. Comfy cozy. And these are a little long. It's wet outside and just walking from the house to the barn got the bottoms all wet. When I tell you it is a visceral reaction flashback back when uh, long flare jeans were in and you would show up to school with the bottom of your jeans just, just soaking baby. And they would not dry the entire day. You would just be sitting in math class and when it touched the back of your leg, huh. Anyways, the hat. <laughs> so I came in this little bag. In order to actually make the order, because this was so cheap, I needed to buy something else to round it out to $10, I believe. So I got this. Sounds like a Rugrats episode. Okay, okay. Uh, let's try her on. I'll be honest, it's not atrocious. A fabric hat that has the wood print on it. And then this is wire, so you can kind of form it. Oh, you like it. Woodland decor, not so strategically placed ferns, just glued on there. And then the broom, which does not fit my giant wig clad noggin. So yeah, I, it's, it's cute, but we can make it cuter. Hmm. Let's talk plan of attack. All right, buckaroos, the goal, take this hat, make it cute and whimsical. To do this, I'm gonna tear it apart, make my own pattern, remake it out of foam until I am very satisfied. Swamp hag. Right. <laughs> Obviously, I've got my foam here, EVA foam. My friends, first thing we need to do, harvest. <laughs> tear apart to make our pattern pieces. Separate the brim from the rest of it. That will act as a circular pattern to pretty much copy exactly to make my own brim. To cut apart the hat, lay it flat. I'm assuming it will be like kind of a triangle shape. In layman's terms, I'm gonna wreck it. Let's do it. It's a hundred percent witch skin. So it can be a bloody cursed hat. Yep. I am gonna glue everything together. I'm wondering if I can, not that this isn't quite an impressive length. See if I can heat form it, go like that a little bit. Just, just a little bit. Okay, well, turn. 
turns out I, uh, I have no idea where my contact cement is or if I used all of it in a previous project because I have the memory of a geriatric goldfish. That's mildly upsetting and means that I have to run to the hardware store. Frank. <laughs> All right, had an annoying pit stop, but I got my iced coffee, so it's not all bad. Teeny little bottle of contact cement, and then plastic dip because I figured I would probably need it. Now, admittedly, I could probably do this with a hot glue gun, but I just like contact cement creates an instant bond rather than a hot glue gun where you kind of have to like hold it in a specific spot and wait for it to set. Contact cement on each side of here. Line up the edges like so. <sighs> Let's do it. While that contact cement was setting, I got to practicing. This had a bit less towering and imposing. I ran my heat gun over it just to limber it up a little and then kind of just kept folding and molding to make it look like fabric or a very sad accident prone traffic cone. It started to look okay from the sides, but from the front, it was definitely giving Doug Dimmodome. Owner of the Dimsdale Dimmodome. So I kind of kept just repeating the process and heating it up, forming it, just making it a little bit more loosey goosey and then adding that wire back in for the next step. All right. Moving right along, I just want to get the things that I'm going to make and need to set overnight out of the way before we focus on anything else. Sar, foam koi, love of my life. The hat, which as you sort of saw, I hot glued this wire to. I'm pretty happy with the shape. Cover the base of this with a little bit of tin foil to kind of round this shape out. Wrap it in foam clay, and then we can make our little mushrooms. Really don't need much of this kind of like sculpting it with tin foil, which is nice because obviously the harder you squeeze and compact it, the smaller it gets. Tin foil 101, you're welcome. All right. The forbidden taffy. Doesn't have to be perfect. This is going to be like a tree trunk, so. <laughs> Wrap around the little wire section too. Ta-da. I'm just gonna leave it as it is and then we can dremel some texture in it when it dries. Little mushrooms. And they may or may not look a bit suggestive. I don't want to hear it. My tiny mushroom army. <laughs> so cute. All right, well those need to set. Probably not 24 hours, but to keep it simple, I'm just gonna plan to work on these tomorrow. I think they're precious and I love them. To start thinking about how I wanna do this tree bark texture. I have done many a method of making things look like wood on this channel. Not something I set out to have a common theme. It do be like it do be. I've done it all. Made it out of foam clay and carved in the wood grain. I have burned in texture. I have dremeled in texture. Something I haven't done. Create the bark on a separate piece of material and then glue it on. Well, that means that I need to do some research on tree bark and see what it actually looks like. It's a good thing I'm appropriating glasses culture right now because it makes me feel smart. Let's go. Big stretch. For this hat, I decided I wanted to go with sort of a really gnarled oak bark. It's kind of just gonna be like puzzle pieces. Okay. Actually, I should probably number these. I'm gonna take a picture of this because I can see this getting confusing really quick. Choppy choppy. My initial plan was to also do this for the brim, but uh, You'll see later on, I changed my mind on that. This kind of reminds me of school when you were younger and you had to rearrange the United States and then promptly not retain any of that information and or know where your states are as a 31 year old. Ta-da! 
glue these on to the hat and then we can kind of go from there. Look out y'all, things are about to get sexy. <laughs> As I was gluing on these pieces, I realized that just ripping the foam would be way more realistic and bark-like. Also, me breathing in this mask just cracks me up. It's like Darth Vader hosting a crafting tutorial. I'll be honest in saying that took about a minute more than I thought it would. For the brim, I'm just gonna dremel in some wood grain because you're really not gonna see the top of it anyways. And this was a pain, pain in, in my, my tushy. tushy. There it is. I'm glad I discovered that ripping it would give more of a bark texture, but now I sort of have to figure out how to get that texture back to the original pieces. Calling it quits for today. Let everything set, go breathe some fresh air. I'm excited, this is looking pretty cute. It also is kind of reading Heartless from Kingdom Hearts and I am totally okay with that. So. Good progress today, team. I'll see you tomorrow. Yep. Welcome to my natural habitat, the floor. Oh, my coffee's up there. Oh, oh, oh. Brick. I went in this morning and annoyingly picked off most of the straight edges with my fingies. Focus. Wreck it <laughs> even more. Just really go ham. Full Christmas goose on this baby. Divots and holes, crevices. Add some wood grain onto the brim. And then we can set it with a probably Plasti Dip. So without too much rambling, let's get started. It wasn't long before I realized my Dremel sounds like an alley cat getting ready for a fight. Ignoring its desperate plea for help, I started just really adding some texture onto these little bark pieces. time to add the wood grain onto the brim. I have been doing the same wood grain pattern since I was literally eight years old, so I wish I could explain how I do this, but I, I just kind of wing it. After taking my heat gun to all the dangly bits, twas time for Plasti Dip. After letting it sit in hot water for a few minutes, I took to the ground and apparently you did that plastic dip cap off into another dimension. <laughs> That's okay, it was politely returned to me by the spirits. <laughs> Not much method here, just trying to get it into the little nooks and crannies, which was very difficult on this chosen blustery day. It was absolutely freezing outside, and this is the time of the year when I have to go from my house to the barn at this speed. So I kept spraying until my bad circulation said, no more, please. Oh, on that note of not being able to feel any of my full Angie's, I'm gonna warm the car up. We're gonna run to the store. I love winter. I love it. It was at this point my body kicked into survival mode and all I cared about was warming up my little fingertips until I could finally psych myself up enough to keep filming. As you can tell by this psych up face. Let's go. Barbie Michael, procurer of overpriced crafting items. Mission find fake flora was successful, but then trying to find all the other stuff I needed for the convention this week left me pulling a John Travolta meme. Oh, okay. <laughs> Time to paint. 
I keep forgetting that I have big hair today. The amount of times I've bumped it on stuff. We are going to keep this paint job pretty dang simple. All plasti dipped and ready to have paint slapped across it. Normally I would probably do a couple layers, but frankly, my dear, I don't give a f Just gonna push that to the side out of my way until it overwhelms me. <laughs> Story of my life. That brown, black, and white. A couple different shades of brown, probably a desaturated brown. Taking my professional paint palette. Just a teensy bit of black. Woo! White, a gray brown. Dry brush this on, get it in between all the cracks. My method, chaotic energy. <laughs> to go in with just a bunch of different layers of brown. Slapping it like it owes me money. Just kidding. I hate confrontation, so if it did owe me money, you would never hear a word from me about it. <laughs> okay, brim. Then I'll probably go over this a couple more times. While I'm doing that, I bring to you a concerto because I've been practicing. Enjoy. <clears throat> Back to working on the hat, I did a couple more layers of light brown and then I went in and added some white to lighten it up and make it look more like craggly old dried up bark. Then it was time to paint my little mushroom soldiers. As I was painting the red, it wasn't quite as vibrant as I wanted and I realized I probably should have painted it white let that dry and then painted the red over top. So I backtracked and essentially wasted time doing that. <laughs> Complete and unapologetic side note, because I want to know if any of you are like me. Do you ever find something or look at something from your childhood and all of a sudden the way that you are is explained. It all makes sense. I was sitting on my little cabin trip with friends. I had a brain blast. I don't know how it came up, but I was thinking about the I Spy books, how much I used to love them. <laughs> Turns out they still make the same ones. And so I ordered them and then instantly forgot that I ordered them. So when they came in the mail, it was just a nice, a nice little surprise. And just looking through my love of clutter tightly packed decorated spaces. It all makes sense. Thank you, I Spy, for making me the person that I am today. A maximalist. Also, I love that when I opened it up, Nick just assumed it was a present I got for my niece. <laughs> Adults can buy things for themselves too. It was essentially like a cheesy 80s movie moment. No, this one, <laughs> this one's for me. Anywho, I'm gonna keep painting these mushrooms and I'll check in later. <laughs> now comes the best part, hodgepodging. My mushrooms. My bushel and my hat. Plug in this bad boy. Come on now. I need scissors. <laughs> you know, normally I would quite a sedentary lifestyle, but when I'm doing a project, who needs a home gym, am I right? Just the amount of squats I probably do in a day. <laughs> Snip off the bits that I like. He loves me, he loves me not. <clears throat> Forgot the moss. <laughs> Love whimsical projects. Am I leaving for a convention in less than a day? Maybe. Was this the smartest decision to make a sort of complicated project? No comment, this press conference is over. Well, we're just gonna start sticking. And you're done. Oh, this is pretty cute. Oh! <laughs> All right, friends, 
I think I'm gonna call it quits before my too much gene ruins everything. Happy with it, I think it's really cute. I might uh, add a little teensy weensy bit of shading to these white flowers because they look just kind of out of place. Other than that, I will see you in the reveal. That's it. All right. Overall, I think it's cute. Uh, I don't think I quite got the shape right. It looks a bit like a park ranger, wide and bulky, kind of up top. The side profile though, I can dig it. I think it's much cuter from the side, the little swirly do. It's just gonna probably be a display piece anyways. And if I do wear it again, I'm not gonna wear it with a wig because it just barely fits. I have to kind of keep like scrunching it down a bit should fit like this but instead it kind of just like sits on top of my head i can also probably try to heat form it a little so that it fits my head a little bit more but you know what for this video it's fine it's whimsical it's foresty it's witchy it's maybelline i freaking love just making cutesy little items and if they happen to look like wood that's just a that was an added bonus. Like I said, I needed something um small scale as I am leaving for <sighs> Megacon today. Woof. I think it's cute, especially when you look at the original. I tried to keep kind of the same vibes. I'm ready to go pick some mushrooms in my little witch hut out in a secluded part of the forest where your mere presence sparks rumors amongst the village children. The dream. Hopefully you enjoyed the process of watching me make this. I'm going to try to steal the Keyblade from Sora and finish packing. If you would like to see extra bonus content, I think we're up to like 20 bonus videos, patreon.com slash rachelmaxi, $5 a month. I'm very excited to start work on my bigger builds for this year. Let me know what you would like to see. I, I would also like to do more fashion related stuff, like outfit things, so. Just let me know. I love you whether you're new or old to this channel. If you're new here and you feel like sticking around, feel free to subscribe. I upload every other Friday and we have fun here. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. Oh God, that's bright. What's it got in its pockets, precious? Lady. I'm a weary traveler. Mm, my lord. Ah, that was a loud rooster. My dude.